Same-sex couples can now be married in the Church of Scotland after an historic vote by the Church's General Assembly this week. The Kirk now joins a growing list of churches permitting same-sex marriage ceremonies across the UK, including the Scottish Episcopal Church, the Methodist Church, the United Reformed Church and the Quakers in Britain. The Reverend Scott Rennie, Minister of Crown Court, the Church of Scotland Congregation in London's Covent Garden, is with us. In 2009, he became the first openly gay minister in the Church of Scotland to have his appointment approved. Also with us, the Reverend Andrew McGowan, also a Church of Scotland minister and professor of theology in the University of the Highlands and Islands. Good morning. Welcome to both of you. Glad to have you with us. Uh, Scott, can I come to you first? Because this has been a very long journey to this point for LGBTQ church members uh, in the Church of Scotland. How are you feeling, first of all? I'm feeling great. Uh, thanks, William. And uh, I think it's a great week for the Church of Scotland in terms of its mission and ministry to all the people of Scotland. And as you noted, we've been on a journey really since 2005, 2006, uh, with the, the beginning uh, of uh, blessing uh, LGBT people in same-sex partnerships and civil partnerships and it's led us to this week's historic vote. Andrew, I know you'll be feeling differently because as one of the founders of the campaign group Covenant Fellowship Scotland, your opposition to this direction of travel, if I can put it that way, within the church is long-standing. How are you feeling? Well, I, I think it's deeply sad that the Church of Scotland has decided to follow the world instead of following the teaching of Scripture. I don't think that we're at liberty to make up our morality as we go along, because God has spoken by His Spirit through the Scriptures, and the Scriptures are very clear that same-sex sexual acts are contrary to God's will and sinful and therefore the church should not be promoting such. Scott, i got to wonder how you hold the church together, keep people under the same roof, as it were, with such a fundamental disagreement about issues of truth, identity, authority of the kind that Andrew's just outlined there. Yes, I mean, that has been part of the debate all along. Can we hold people together? And the truth is, uh, for the Church of Scotland at least, that despite uh, all the fears of major breakaways, indeed schism at one point, for sure there have been a few who have gone and left uh, to f the free church or non-denominational non churches, but the vast majority of the Church of Scotland have held together because... On this, as on many issues, there is genuine uh, disagreement about where the Spirit is leading, how to read and understand Scripture. I mean, the idea that uh, one part of the Church disregards uh, Scripture is just simply unfair. It's a disagreement about Scripture and its place and its connection with reason in the modern world. So, uh, I mean, churches like the Church of Scotland, the Church of England, big national churches are broad, and they try and hold their disagreements together. I mean, we all disagree upon many things, but it doesn't mean to say we can't live together and we can't respect one another. And hopefully that's what we'll continue to do. Andrew, when you look at the kinds of things that Christians disagree about within the church, between the lines of what Scott's just been saying there, from divorce and questions about abortion, euthanasia, war... Uh, even poverty issues and, and the, the right approach to the economy, all kinds of things that Christians disagree about. Why is this one so central to you? It's not central in the sense that I believe many other things as well, of course, but it is central in that on those uh, other issues, perhaps the scriptures are not quite as clear. The scriptures are very clear, Old and New Testament, that, that this uh, same-sex sexual acts are wrong or sinful. Um, and to talk about leading by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit cannot contradict what he's already spoken through prophets and apostles. The, the scriptures were given to us by God, breathed out by the Holy Spirit. Men spoke from God at says Peter, as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. So how can it possibly be that the Holy Spirit is now contradicting what he said 
through those prophets and apostles. I simply don't believe that this is progress or development or whatever. It's simply going along with what a liberal society accepts. And the church is not supposed to just go along with society to be conformed to the world. We are called upon to be a prophetic voice speaking to the world what God has said to us. Let, let me give world. a response to Scott Rennie on that and whether you're whether this journey that we've been talking about, Scott, is rooted within scripture and tradition within the church or is, is inspired, as Andrew's been saying, by, by secular changes? Well, this is always the argument made by, uh, by some who find change difficult, and particularly uh, change in the light of modern knowledge. I mean, it, it's fascinating to me the way that in this discussion... Uh, LGBT plus people are reduced to sexual actions. I, I've never quite understood that. I don't look at heterosexual uh, married couples and John Lewis and think about what they do in their bed. I see their companionship, I see their comfort, I see their marriage about a, a relationship, not reducing them to, to what I think they might or might not do uh, in bed. And I, I just find this odd and this obsession odd. And it seems to me that, of course, we learn things about humanity. Of course, we learn things through psychology, through science. And we've got to read Scripture in that light. I'm not suggesting we should just uh, throw away the Scriptures and just conform to anything. I think there is a genuine case here uh, within the churches where people's understanding of human sexuality has developed. Uh, we've grown better. We know more. And so we read, read Scripture in that light. And I think... I think there should be a generosity of spirit on this and on many other issues when it comes to the church. Scott Rennie, Andrew McGowan, thanks to both of you.